Welcome to a Code Report Solution video for the 2021 Advent of Code. We are back at it again with day three. Let's hope it was less parsing than day two because I wasted quite a bit of time in that problem. Once again, I am going to skip ahead in a couple minutes and explain to you what this problem is because there's always more to parse in terms of the problem statement than is necessary. So luckily the parsing today I think is gonna be a lot easier and I am pretty sure this is actually a pretty easy problem to solve in APL, but let's see. So basically you're given this uh, grid which represents, I don't know, zeros and ones. And what they want you to do is to get a count of the zeros and ones in each column and then take the most common one so if, or to take the coast, most common number, if that's one, it's one, if it's zero, if it's zero, and then the most common number that occurs in each of the columns is gonna represent this thing called a gamma rate, and it's gonna be a binary number, so you just need to convert that to decimal, and then the epsilon rate is gonna be the opposite of that, so the least common number. So they're gonna be analogs of each other in that the gamma here is one, zero, one, one, zero, and then the epsilon is zero, one, zero, zero, one. You convert those to decimal, then you multiply them, and then you're done. So let's go ahead and try this in APL. It should be fun. And so here we are. Uh, I've loaded once again our test data into this test.txt file. Um, so if we type this and we go data, we get this uh, nested list of strings. So let's just quickly, uh, that's the wrong one. We want to do mix uh, to get this. And I guess we might even be able to do it in the same form. Um, I wonder what happens. I guess we have to keep this in string form. So let's just do that for now. And so what if we, or actually, so the easiest way to kind of do this is if it equals one. So is that the same thing? So what was uh, the top two is our zeros and equals one converts this to numbers. Sure, so if we do, so what is the shape of this? Is 12, five? And so does that mean the tally of this is gonna be 12? Sure, okay, so we've got 12 rows. And if we do a column-wise reduction, which is this little, so, you know, slash is reduced, but if we want to do reductions column-wise, we just do this slash with a little line through it. This is gonna give us the counts of all of the ones. And so anytime this one is greater than six, I assume, or not I assume, that's gonna be the most common number. So um, technically we can do a, for the moment, a tally data, parenthesize this, and if we do two division commute, this is gonna give us six. So this will be 12 divided by two, um, we do the commute here because technically this would be 2 divided by 12, but the commute flips the order that we pass this, so it's really 12 divided by 2. And now that we have that, we want to know which of these are going to be greater than 6. And this is going to give us our gamma. And so if we do this, um, technically, you know, the knot of this is going to be epsilon, so pretty fancy. And then we can do a 2, is it decode? Yeah, so I actually don't know. What is that called? Decode, encode? I can never remember these two. Um, but basically, we have little functions for um, encoding and decoding uh, any base numbers. That's what the two here, it's saying base two. Um, and that gives us 22. So this, once again, is a psi combinator. So if we compose this, we're doing a, uh, we're applying, ooh, actually, so this is going to be, this is going to be neat. So we're applying the two decode to each of our uh, epsilon and gamma here. And what we want to do first is basically a fork where we catenate and we do identity for our gamma and then epsilon um, for uh, the other time, which is gonna be not. And so if we do this, and technically, to make this a little bit more clear, because we're catenating here, if we do this comma 0 0.5, I've got questions about this in previous videos. This basically just puts them one on top of each other instead of next to each other. So now we've got our, our gamma and our epsilon. And what we want to do now is we want to, inside here, 
do a, uh, this is what we call a psi combinator. It's known as a top, or no, it's known as over in APL. And then we want to apply the two decode um, to both of these and then multiply them afterwards. Hmm, didn't work. Uh, probably it's not parsing this correctly. And now it does parse it correctly, which is pretty disappointing um, that we need all these parentheses, although we probably don't need this one. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Wow, look at, honestly, honestly, that is just gorgeous. I mean, obviously unreadable for the uninitiated, but you just got it's just the power. The power um, is incredible of this language. Uh, we've got, you know, the, the psi combinator, which they call over. We've got the B combinator in the form of composition. Or actually, this is partial application, so that's bind. That's not the B combinator. We've got the C combinator, which is flipping. We've got, you know, row-wise and column-wise reduction. Just phenomenal. Um, anyways, I am going to... Should we refactor this? So let's see if we can actually turn this fully point-free. Point so... Yeah, this would be our binary operation in the middle. Uh, put that parentheses back. And then, so data, this is gonna be composed. So probably the easiest thing to do here is really just keep this right time as a defund because this is monadic. Um, actually, technically, that, that would be three train. Actually, so you, you could actually do it. Um, so yeah, if we compose this, that becomes unary. This becomes a three train where the left time is an array or a scalar. And then the four train is going to be B com the B combinator, a.k.a. just monadic or unary function composition. So this should work. And then for this, we are going to do this and actually do we even need we don't even actually need this that's beautiful um does this work oh my goodness um i apologize for the waxing rhapsodic um but this is just that is just brilliant um this is definitely my favorite day so far so I believe we need the parentheses here. So this actually parses, so yeah, this parses as a four train, so we need the parentheses. This parses as a three train, where the left tine is an array. And then um, this altogether is a three train, so we can actually delete that. And I believe we need to keep this in parentheses. So if we do this, and then go sol a, whoops, sol a data. There you go. That is, oh, can you believe it? Um, and this probably, this probably can be golfed a little bit more. I mean, this was just my first stab at this. I'm sure we will get some comments in the comment section down below saying that uh, I went overkill on, and it could have been done maybe a little bit simpler. Anyways, uh, I'm going to skip ahead, go load the data in, come back, and we'll go see if I got this correct. So on second thought, I will show you executing this solution with the full data set in a minute, but I recorded this at 2 a.m. last night and was so excited about this solution that I actually do want to clean this up a tiny bit. So we're going to do that very quickly. So the first thing that we can do is note that this is really sort of part of the data pre-processing. We're um, just reshaping the data with our mix here or our split, one of the two, and then turning our strings into uh, numeric. So really what we can do here is we can copy this and then delete it from here and then go back to our data line and basically just add it here. Um, and then if we do that, now if we go sole a data, we still should get 198. And then we can clean this up a tiny bit more. So we can get rid of the parentheses, the parentheses now, and this will work. On top of that, now that this is basically just, um, well, actually we're gonna leave this on the right. But the thing we're gonna do here is that 
the equivalent of dividing the tally by two, dividing the size by two and checking if the sum, the column wise sum is greater than that is to not actually divide by two. Um, and we can leave the parentheses there for a sec, but it's to multiply by two. And because as I've mentioned before, things evaluate right to left, this is going to be a three train. And then this will be a five train, um, AKA like two, three trains back to back. So this will basically evaluate first and then uh, that'll be the right time on another three train. And on top of that, we can then delete these parentheses around the tally because it's just a single glyph. And at this point, it's quite a bit terser than what we had before. And sure enough, if we do sold data, we get the same thing. So this will be the solution that I actually post on my GitHub repo. With that said, let's hop over into plugging our full data in and testing it. All right, we are back. Delete this hyphen test load the data in let's do a shape of data to see how large it is um so that's a thousand rows that is we don't know actually the number of columns because this is still in sort of string nested form i guess if we do this we get the so it's a thousand rows 12 columns and once again if we go soul a data we're going to get 4.1 million we skip over to Advent of Code, submit it. One gold star, gotta love it. All right, continue to part two. And as always, you know, this is what I don't like about Advent of Code. Um, they just give you so much to read. So I'll be back in a follow-up video to solve part B of day three. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something and have a great day.